Hello, my name is Ian McCall, and this is just a short talk on uh, Palmo plantar psoriasis. Now, we're simply showing a foot there that uh, is showing the marked keratoderma of psoriasis. You can see it particularly at the edges of the heels here and the edge of the bones of the forefoot. But you can see it's also extensively involving the um, arch of the foot and extending up onto the side of the foot here. It has the characteristic silvery scale uh, and the background salmon color of, uh, of psoriasis. We're used to seeing psoriasis on the elbows and the knees for the thick plaques there. And sometimes, you know, at the nape of the neck as well. But sometimes you can get psoriasis just localized to the soles of the feet and the palms of the hands. And on those areas, it takes two forms. It either takes the hyperkeratotic form like this, or you can get the localized pustular form uh, with a whole series of pustules, mainly in this uh, area. Now I'll show you some pictures of that shortly, but here we're dealing with the hyperkeratotic form. I see this particularly in overweight women uh, who go around uh, either in bare feet or with sandals on where they don't have enclosed footwear. Repeated trauma will give rise to this thickened uh, epidermis and the thickened keratin layer. Um, you know, in psoriasis, the skin's growing eight to 10 times faster than normal. And any localized repeated trauma to an area of the skin seems to induce the psoriasis to come up in that area. So that plays a big part in, in this happening. A lot of women past the menopause, they can get a thickening of the uh, palmar and plantar skin anyway. And if they've got a tendency to psoriasis, it's always a lot more marked. Um, what are you going to do here? Well, the first thing is make sure they have closed footwear. Then you're going to have to use um, something to thin down this uh, scale here. Now, you can either use some 40% urea cream, and uh, I think that goes under the name of Eulactyl, E-U-L-A-C-T-Y-L, Eulactyl Heal Balm, which will soften this, or you can use 20% uh, urea that you, um, urea derm, um, I think it's actually only 10%. It'll soften it a bit as well. 10% salicylic acid in sorbaline would help to soften this. Uh, but many cases actually require an oral retinoid to uh, get the scale off. Now, oral retinoids, such as um, neotigacin or acetretin, you can use these in women past the menopause, but not before that because they're teratogenic drugs and they hang around in the fat tissues for quite some time, uh, 12 to 18 months, in fact. So, you know, you don't use them in menstruating females. Uh, but within a week to 10 days of taking 25 to 50 milligrams of, say, neotigacin, all of that thick keratin will peel away. And then you can use an ointment such as Divabet ointment, a mixture of calcipotriol and, and a steroid. And that uh, will help to reduce the rate at which the cells then um, start to, to produce excess keratin again. It'll, you know, induce them to stop doing that. And so the skin will be a lot um, smoother, a lot softer, because the big problem with thick keratin like this is that it dries and it cracks, and the cracks go all the way right down into the dermis, and so they're quite painful. Um, you can sometimes treat those with some silver nitrate uh, painted into the crack, or even crazy glue is sort of uh, used, but, but really you want to get rid of the excess keratin. Um, the other therapy that can be used to prevent recurrences once you've got rid of the keratin is uh, Daraband UVB. You can actually use Puva, where I give them an ointment, a uh, sorrel ointment that penetrates into the skin and then we expose them to UVA light. But you can use just Daraband UVB. Um, but you've, again, you've got to get rid of all that keratin there. No light's going to penetrate through that uh, to act on the psoriatic cells and stop them dividing. So let me look at a few other images that uh, might be of relevance here. There's another case. Um, in this one, it's mainly the weight-bearing areas that are involved. There's not as much involvement in here, but you can, I mean, you can see it to a lower degree here, that you've got all that thick keratin um, occurring in these areas. A Band-Aid's been put over because the skin's cracked in that area. Uh, this is localized pustular psoriasis. It's different. Um, still psoriasis, because in psoriasis, you've got a lot of neutrophils that um, get into the epidermis. And if you get oodles of them, lots and lots of them, they accumulate underneath the stratum corneum, high up 
and you get these little pustules. They're sterile pustules. You know, if you swab those, you won't grow anything. They're just neutrophils. So when they dry up, they form these little brown scabs here that ultimately just peel off. But again, to treat this, um, you need a strong steroid uh, ointment. Now, Divabec can be used, or you can use uh, clobetazole, or you can use Diprazone OV, the optimized vehicle of Diprazone. Uh, and sometimes you even need a bit of occlusion. You put the ointment on, you wrap a bit of glad wrap around it to try and make it go into the skin and reduce that inflammation. Um, but remember, these are just neutrophils. There, there's no bacteria there. This doesn't need oral antibiotics or topical antibiotics. It needs a strong topical steroid, and it'll suppress that. Um, that can be a more difficult condition. It may need the patient on methotrexate or one of the new biologics if they get repeated episodes, and especially if it involves the palms of the hands as well. But that's localized pustular psoriasis on the soles of the feet. I mean, there's your classic psoriasis there, you know, again, thick scale at the, um, at the knees, big thick plaque on uh, the front of the shins there as well. Um, sometimes when psoriasis affects the hands, it looks like this. Again, it's usually over the, the major um, trauma uh, based areas, and you can see the, the way the scale has dried up and cracked in these areas here. Um, see the edge on that too. It's often very typical of psoriasis. Uh, just another, we'll leave that one. If you're looking at the histology of psoriasis, you've got this thickened epidermis here. These are the papillary derm, uh, the dermal papilla, I should say. Little blood vessels here, a lot of neutrophils come out of these and go into the epidermis. And if a lot of them accumulate under here, then you get the pustules. Here you've got parakeratosis, retained nuclei in the stratum corneum here. You haven't got a granular layer, you know, there's no granular layer. And often you'll get that or a minimized granular layer in psoriasis. Um, and that's the thick layer of scale there with retained nuclei. Uh, we've got a, another example of it here. Um, that's the psoriatic acanthosis. These are the prominent dermal papillae, the thin suprapapillary plates, the neutrophils coming out of there into the overlying epidermis, um, retained nuclei in the parakeratosis here, and loss of the stratum granulosum. Um, you got these clubbed reti ridges as well. It's another feature of thick plaque psoriasis. I mean, that would be the histology of that leg, that uh, the lesions on the leg there. We saw that particular case down there. Um, just a couple of other little examples of psoriasis of the hands. A tiny wee pustule there that looks vaguely dermatitic as well. You know, you'd look at that, you'd wonder about a, a, an infected um, pomphalic eczema as well. So you've got to look at the rest of the patient um, carefully. Uh, there's, what other ones do we have? Yeah, we've just discussed that. There's another one in the hand. Um, again, threatening with pustules there, but still that typical psoriatic scale. So again, strong topical steroid, either Divabet or Diprazone or Vioclobetazole to knock that back. Uh, last picture, yeah. There's another one that's mainly localized to the instep. Now you'd look carefully at that. You'd wonder about a dermatitic process there. Sometimes psoriasis can get a bit itchy and can look vaguely dermatitic, but you've got to look at the rest of the patient. You look at that edge there, it's more psoriatic as well. I'd scrape that by the way for fungus, um, if I got something a bit unusual like that. And I think lastly, yeah, we've got another um, one of the other consultations here is on pustular uh, psoriasis, and this is this was just to indicate the pustules don't mean infection. Um, you can see all those neutrophils coming out of the uh, dermal papillae vessels there, coming up to the epidermis. So you get enough of them, that's when you get the pustules like this. So a strong fluorinated steroid on this, maybe even um, with uh, occlusion at night to get that. I've commented there that most of these, it's still a good idea to take some swabs and take some scrapings just to exclude a uh, fungus because occasionally you get a tinea of the soles of the feet and you'll get a vesicular reaction to uh, tinea. But if the initial lesions are pustules like this, 
um, it's usually pustular, localized pustular psoriasis. So you can see how psoriasis takes a variety of forms depending on the pathology, depending on the degree of proliferation as to how thick the scale is and whether you get pustules or not depends on how much extravasation of neutrophils there are from these vessels in the dermal papillae coming out just underneath the stratum corneum there. But uh, we get back to our original case and it was this one here. Uh, and again, this has all the features of psoriasis. So here, neotigosin or acetretin to get rid of the scale or one of the keratolytics, then some diver bed ointment um, and make sure that they're in leather shoes and they're uh, protecting their skin and not getting any Kobner effect, making the psoriasis worse like this. Thanks very much.